and you are ready to go on us. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Okay, hello everyone. Bienvenidos y bienvenidas and welcome to the Reforma LA Spanish Language Book Fair. My name is Ana Avalos and I am the senior librarian in the Multilingual Collections Department at the Los Angeles Public Library. And I am a member of the Reforma LA chapter. Um, this event is open to librarians, educators, students, and professionals interested in serving the Latino and Spanish speaking communities. In this session, we will have HarperCollins, Penguin Random House Grupo Editorial, Spanish publishers, Lectorum Publications, Cinco Books, and Latin American Bookstores. They will feature their new adult Spanish language titles. But first, let me introduce my colleague, Ana Campos. Hi, everyone. I'm the other Ana. I won't say it. I always joke that I'm the nicer <laughs> Anna. Anna is nice Anna. I'm nicer Anna. Um, and I'm an assistant director of Central Library Services at Los Angeles Public Library. I'm a member of the Reforma LA chapter and the co chair of the Reforma LA Book Fair Committee. And now we will start with the book presentations. All slides and order sheets are available on our website reformala.org forward slash blog forward slash book fair for you to download and take notes. Our first presenter is Edward Benitez from HarperCollins. For more information about this company and contact information, please visit reformala.org forward slash blog forward slash book fair. All links and contact information will be added to the chat. Please feel free to add your questions in the comment box during the presentation and they will be answered at the end. As a reminder, these presentations are being recorded for future viewing. Welcome, Edward. Thank you, Anna and Anna. It's a pleasure to be with everyone today. And I know that I have only 20 minutes, so I'm going to get started. So I should go ahead and share the screen, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. So first of all, before I start with the new titles, I want to just a quick review the uh, our fall titles from 2021. And just so you know, all of these titles are available on ebook and audio. Frederick Bachman, Hendanciosa, uh, the author of uh, Anxious People, a New York Times bestseller and bestseller worldwide, uh, fantastic author. And we're going to be publishing as well many of his backlists. This is his latest book about uh, a group of hostages in a home after a bank robbery. Uh, en Busca de Emma by Armando Lucas Correa, of course, the publisher of People in Español. This is, Ed, he revisits his groundbreaking publication from uh, 2007 when he uh, adopted with his husband, with his now husband, uh, uh, Emma, and it, he updates the reader on all the happenings since that happened, including his family growing and they have two more, two additional children. So it's a fantastic, uh, wonderful book. Uh, Lo Suficiente Hombre, Man Enough um, by Justin Baldoni. Uh, you may know him from Jane the Virgin. Here is a book about uh, how to be a man and how to be a respectful, respectful, honorable man joining uh, his, uh, joining women in, in, in how to better treat, how to be a better, uh, person, a better man, and a better father, and, uh, and Justin has got a huge following on social media. And of course, Mario Escobar, the best-selling author uh, from Spain, and this is his latest novel, uh, El Maestro, The Teacher, and about a, a based on a true story of a teacher that saves countless children from uh, the Warsaw Ghetto during World War II. And our first title today is Velorio by Javier uh, Navarro Aquino. And this is a, the first novel published about uh, Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. And this is a, a debut novel by a, uh, an incredibly well-respected Iowa workshop graduate author. And it follows a group of survivors at, immediately after Hurricane Maria in search of hope on an island torn apart by the, both natural disaster and human violence. 
violence. And there you get a wonderful quote from uh, Justin Torres. This just released in January in, uh, in trade paperback. Oops. Skip the title. Oh, there we go. So here is the other uh, Frederick Bachman book. So we're going to be releasing one, probably one per season. Uh, Britt Marie was here, and Britt Maria Stuwaki. And this is a, a, a funny, wonderfully sweet story about uh, a community coming together and when they're feeling so isolated. It's a very funny, uh, again, quirky uh, that captures Frederick Bachman's sense of humor wonderfully. And again, uh, Frederick Bachman is a worldwide best selling author published in over 22 languages all over the world. And uh, El Billonario y el Monje, The Billionaire and the Monk by v Vibor Kumar Singh. And this is a very, a, a short uh, a parable, if you will, about uh, a when a billionaire and a monk uh, meet and how they come together and try to understand each other. Each of them think that they have the answer to life's happiness, but in fact, there's much that they can learn from each other. So, uh, and, you know, so he answers the eternal question is, are you happy? So it, it's a, it's a short book. It's a wonderful book. And in just when you think, you know, the answer to, um, how to be happy, uh, uh, Vibor Kumar Singh comes with a, it comes about it in a different angle and, um, and it's just absolutely wonderful. So we're very happy to be publishing. Uh, he was published initially in India and now it's been picked up in over seven languages worldwide. Sin pareja, sin pareja a propósito, uh, Single on Purpose by John Kim. And he is the best-selling author of Yo era un cabrón amargado. Uh, here is a guide to prioritizing your relationship with yourself. If you can't make the, as RuPaul says, I think he's one that says it, uh, if you can't uh, uh, make yourself happy, who will? So this is, uh, it, it's for people who have never been in a relationship, people who jump from relationship to relationship, um, and those people that have lost themselves in their current relationship. So it's a book for everybody. It's, uh, there is more to life than those that we choose to love. And moving on to our titles publishing this summer, we've got another Frederick Bachman, Cosas de que mi hijo necesita saber sobre el mundo, Things My Son Needs to Know About the World. Um, it's a perfect for Father's Day. Don Winslow's Ciudad en Llamas, uh, the best-selling author of The Border. And here is his latest book about um, the Irish Italian mafia in at the turn of the century. And Quien Traicionó a Anne Frank, Who Betrayed Anne Frank. It's been a New York Times bestseller right now. And this is uh, they, they uh, using forensic evidence, they find out who they think uh, betrayed uh, the Anne Frank family. And Yo Tengo Un Sueño by Martin Luther King. So this is a reissue of the speech uh, the you know the, the wonderful speech by Martin Luther King, and it's going to have a new forward by a mega mega star, very important author. It's going to do. I can't reveal that right now, but I can I can safely say that it's going to be absolutely wonderful. It's going to be in a keepsake hardcover edition in Spanish. Indomita by Dalma Llanos Figueroa. Uh, this is the unforgettable story of Pola, an African captive who is purchased for the sole purpose of breeding in Puerto, in Puerto Rico. So this is uh, Pola, uh, who has another name in Africa, is sold to slave traders and is transported to Puerto Rico to work the sugar cane fields. And, uh, and this is a very, you know, a very little discussed topic in uh, both in Puerto Rico and in Latin America, the uh, export, uh, the importation of uh, uh, African slaves to work 
the sugarcane fields in, in Puerto Rico. And the author is absolutely one of the uh, most celebrated Afro Latina literary authors. And this book is absolutely fantastic. Anybody that wants to read this book in Spanish, I highly recommend it. it and the author is fantastic. And she is more than willing to do events at libraries anywhere. Sira by Maria Duenas. Uh, Maria Duenas is a, a, is a huge mega bestseller in Spain, and we've acquired the rights for the United States of her latest novel, and it's a sequel to El Tiempo Entre Costuras, the time and the time in between. And um, her this book had, has sold over 150,000 copies the first two weeks in Spain. And here is our blockbuster for summer 22, the wonderful and glorious Charitín Goico. This is her autobiography. Now, Charitín is an absolute star in uh, for over 40 years. She has been a, a, a singer, a uh, 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 actress. She is on television. She is currently in Mexico uh, hosting a game show with uh, being part of a panel of a game show. And this is for the first time she talks about her life, her her heartbreaks and uh, her many loves in her life. Uh, this is probably the book that I've gotten the most requests for from readers everywhere and, and it hasn't even been announced yet. So we're, we're thrilled to, uh, to have Charitine in our list and she is absolutely wonderful. And again, this is another author that would be available for events in libraries everywhere. Monarca by Leopoldo Gut. Uh, this is a wonderful parable, fa fable for, uh, for all ages about a Mexican American girl who's transformed into a butterfly and undertakes great migration. Uh, it takes part of the migration of butterflies from, Cal from California to Mexico. And this is her, um, her, her, her grandmother converts her into a butterfly and she joins the grandmother in Mexico. So absolutely beautiful. It's gonna have illustrations throughout. Um, absolutely beautiful. And then here's just a, uh, for upcoming titles uh, coming up in, uh, in the fall. Um, uh, uh, Yo Soy Diosa by uh, Christine Gutierrez. This was published in English by Penguin Random House, Puerto Rican. Uh, 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 gosh, I don't even know, like uh, a woman uh, that leads uh, talleres throughout the, in Puerto Rico uh, on how to empower women everywhere. El Libro Tibetano de la, de la Vida y la Muerte. This is a classic and it will be available in Spanish in the US. Reina Grande, best-selling author of uh, many books, Corrido de Amor y Gloria. This will be a novel about the uh, Mexican-American War in the 1800s and a little known fact about the Irish uh, army that came to fight for the US in this war. And it's absolutely a fantastic, beautiful love story. Masabio que el Diablo by Gary John Bishop on, on self-improvement. Pequeñas verdades para superar las pruebas de mierda que nos lance la vida. So I think that covers it all. And uh, very quickly, Donde Somos Humanos. This is a collection of 41 essays, poems, and art by immigrants uh, and refugees and dreamers, including writers, artists, and activists uh, from all walks of life, from all over the different backgrounds and from all over the world. And here is our big title for the fall, Paulina Rubio, Un Poco Más de Mi. And this is for the first time, Paulina Rubio, the Mexican superstar, combination of, let's say, Madonna and Cher. Uh, she is, for the first time, talks about her, her, 
her life, she's really been very reticent to share her life uh, in, to, with the public. And this is for the first time she'll talk about all her uh, incredible highs and devastating losses um, in, in her life. So we're proud to be publishing Paulina in conjunction with HarperCollins Mexico. And uh, yes, La Chica Dorada, absolutely. And then finally, oops, uh, finally, we are reissuing and revising all of our backlist Paulo Coelho. So we, we've had these books for quite a while. The Alquimista has sold over 700,000 copies in Spanish. And we've got, uh, they've all been completely revised, updated, and uh, and we've got beautiful covers on them. You can see them there. Uh, they've kind of got a nice symmetry to them. And, uh, and so for a lot of people, they may know the Alquimista, but they may not know La Quinta Montaña, El Manual del Guerrero de la Luz, or El Demoni, La Señorita Prem, so Once Minutos. So here is a, 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 uh, an opportunity for everyone to catch up on all her, on all our backlist of Paulo Coelho. And I think that is it. So thank you very much. If you've got any questions, edward.benitez at harpercollins.com. I'll be more than happy to send any samples or if you have any questions at all, I'm here for you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Edward. Um, I don't see any questions, but you have beautiful books. Everyone's excited. Um, for Thank all the you. new books coming out. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I do want to remind everyone that, that we do have the list available on the website. So if you want to see the list of the books from the different publishers, they are available on the Reforma website. Okay, so we'll continue. So our second presenter is Alexandra Torrealba from Penguin Random House Grupo Editorial. Single Random House Group Editorial is a corporate member of Reforma. For more information about this company and, and contact information, please visit reformala.org forward slash blog forward slash book fair. And remember to use our hashtag ReformaLA Book Fair. Feel free to add your questions to the comment box during the presentation and they will be answered at the end. Welcome, Alejandra. Thank you so much, Ana. Hello there. My name is Alexandra Torrealba. I am the editor at Vintage Español, which is one of our imprints here at PRH Grupo Editorial. And I'm very, very happy to be with you here today to share uh, some of our highlights um, and upcom recent and, and up upcoming highlights for um, adult readers. I just want to mention before I start that we have around 100 new releases every month in every genre and for every age group. And all of these books, including the ones that I will present today, are available through your distributor of choice um, or in electronic format as well. So without further ado, we begin with a very exciting new book by best-selling author, um, Venezuelan author and journalist Moises Naim, who has published 15 books before this one. He's an expert in foreign affairs and politics, and one of his previous books, The End of Power or El Fin del Poder in Spanish, was the inaugural book of Mark Zuckerberg's um, book club, which he launched um, a few years ago. Naim has won the coveted uh, Ortega y Gasset Award for his journalistic career and an Emmy Award for his um, television show Efecto Naim. Um, in this new book, he takes an original look at the future of democracy. It's a topic really so relevant today, especially given the most recent news headlines. Uh, we will publish our edition with the same cover as the English edition, which is titled The Revenge of Power and already published in uh, late February. Así que quieres hablar de raza is the Spanish edition of Ijeoma Oluo's So You Want to Talk About Race, one of the few books on racism written by a BIPOC woman. The topic is strong and relevant today, and for better or for worse, it will continue to be so. The author expands on um, issues of race that are of relevance to all minorities, including the Latinx community. Uh, the book in English has sold more than 400,000 copies in hardcover only, and we will publish um, with their same cover in this format. 
Up next is Carolina Robertis' new book, uh, The President and the Frog, a really wonderful short novel whose main character is reminiscent of, um, some of you may know, Uruguay's ex-president Pepe Mujica, also known as the world's poorest president. We meet him in one of his lush personal gardens, being interviewed by a journalist about his life's work. At, an, at a given moment, he wonders um, if he should reveal the strange secret of his imprisonment. While held in brutal solitary confinement, he survived in part by discussing revolution, the quest for dignity, and what it means to love a country with the only creature who ever spoke back to him, a loudmouth frog. It's vivid, it's moving, and was just recently nominated for the Penn Jean Stein Book Award. Uh, the author's previous book, Cantoras, won the 2020 Stonewall Book Award, was a finalist for the California Book Award, and was a finalist for the 2019 Kirkus Prize for Fiction. Uh, the Robertis continues to grow into a very essential literary voice in this space, and we're so thrilled to have her once more at Vintage Español. Uh, equally as exciting is this year's winner of the Alfaguara Prize, perhaps the most coveted uh, prize in Spanish literature. Cristian Alarcón is, a Chile is Chilean but lives in Argentina. He's a writer and a journalist, and since the early 1990s, he has devoted his time to investigative journalism and writing. His books um, have been translated into English, French, German, and Polish. Uh, however, none of his books have been on sale in the US before. This would be the very first time. His book, El Tercer Paraíso, is born during the pandemic lockdown. It's a very brilliant story about the daily life of a person, but also about the collective tragedies that really dwell within all of us. Hanya Yanagihara is already a star. The mammoth success of her uh, first book, A Little Life, which has sold some 800,000 copies in all formats in English since it published in 2015, is definitely proof of that. The audience for A Little Life is not only large, but it's also very devoted. It has inspired constant memes across social media networks, from Facebook to Instagram and now TikTok which is why we are sure that her new book, To Paradise, published in January, will be a resounding success. To Paradise is a bold, brilliant novel spanning three centuries and three different versions of the American experiment about lovers, family, loss, and the elusive promise of utopia. The author was a finalist for both the National Book Award and the Booker Prize, and this novel should really have a good shot at winning a major prize as well. As best-selling author Robert Kiyosaki says, good debt makes you rich and bad debt makes you poor. The ABCs of getting out of debt provides the necessary knowledge to navigate through a very challenging credit environment. It teaches readers to beat lenders at their own game, repair credit, deal with debt collectors, and take charge of personal finances. Debt and uh, credit management are two of the problems that most affect our Latinx community. So this is an essential addition to um, finance literatures for our readers. The next one is a particularly exciting one. Sueño Mexicano tells the inspiring story of the creator of the food chain in Mexico called Pollo Feliz. Don Arnoldo de la Rocha was born in the mountain range of Chihuahua. He learned to work the land when he was six years old, didn't wear any shoes until he was eight, and had his first day of school at 11. Out of necessity, his family left the countryside and moved to the city. After hitting rock bottom during a troubled adjustment period um, in this new environment, Arnoldo got a phone call that would change his life. His, un his uncle invited him to learn the trade of grilling chicken at his local restaurant so he could open up his own grill at a different city. And the rest is history. He founded Pollo Feliz, which employs around 10,000 workers in its restaurants in Mexico and the United States and sells more than 4 million chickens a month. The author has self-published his memoirs in Mexico before with a circulation of around 20,000 copies. So we, re we do really have high hopes for his um, debut here in the US. All right, time for an all-time favorite. Vintage Español will be publishing a new Spanish translation of The House on Mango Street. You all know that this is a required reading in many schools across the country and has become a beacon of Latinx literature in the more than 30 years it's been on the market. The new translation was done by acclaimed Mexican author and translator Fernanda Melchor, who worked hand in hand with Sandra Cisneros to bring us a fresh contemporary translation, which is sure to breathe new life into um, this beloved classic and hopefully attract many new readers as well. The cover has also been redesigned by the illustrator of the 25th anniversary edition. We will publish simultaneously with editions in Spain and in Mexico with a very big um, media push. In early March, we will publish a new edition of Santa Evita, one of the great classics of Latin American literature by Argentinian uh, writer Tomás Eloy Martínez. 
At its center is the story of Eva Duarte de Perón, the wife of Juan Domingo Perón, who was president of Argentina in the 70s. While she gained fame during her life as the first lady, it was really her death that led to her stardom. This is the surreal story of how her embalmed body went around the world, was used as a political tool, was kidnapped, and was even reproduced by cult fanatics who claimed to be the bearers of Evita's original body. It has been translated into 30 languages. It has sold more than 10 million copies around the world since its first publication. And this year, Netflix will stream a miniseries based on the novel. Changing gears a little bit, an exciting cookbook is also in the works for this year with surefire hits such as stuffed eggplant in curry and coconut dal, spicy mushroom lasagna and vegetable schnitzel, plus stunning photographs of nearly every recipe. Otolengi's Sabores is the exciting next level approach to vegetable cooking that Yotam's fans, home cooks of all levels and vegetable lovers everywhere have been craving. Otolengi's cookbooks have sold more than 1.5 million copies and five of them have sit have hit the New York Times bestseller list. Alison Bechdel first made noise with her graphic novel, uh, her graphic memoir, sorry, Fun Home, which became a classic in the LGBTQ literature in 2006. A decade later, she returned with another fantastic graphic novel, The Secret to Hup Superhuman Strength, named the best graphic novel of 2021 by Publishers Weekly, The New York Times, and The Boston Globe. It's hilarious and it's very affecting. It tells the story of, or it tells of the author's lifelong love affair with exercise set against a hilarious chronicle of fitness fads of our times. Mario Escobar, the author of this next highlight is a world renowned novelist and essayist. His work has conquered hundreds of thousands of readers around the world. Just to give you an idea, altogether his books have been shelved over 67,000 times at, on Goodreads. Based on true events, this shocking tale takes place during World War II and the Nazi period and tells the story of Jacob and Moses Stein, two young brothers who escaped the roundup in Paris in 1942. This is their fictional journey in attempting to reconnect with their parents. It's perfect for fans of historical fiction. Joanna the Mad, or Juana la Loca, was Queen of Aragon, now Spain, in the 16th century. Despite her royal status, her father locked her up for 46 years until her death. This next wonderful novel, La Loca, recreates the remarkable life of this woman. She is a historical character that ignites curiosity in many, especially in European history buffs. The author, Cristina Falleras, is a Spanish writer and journalist, talk show host, and feminist. She was the creator of the hashtag Cuéntalo, which encouraged hundreds of women on social media to open up about sexual assault. Next up is uh, Chiara Alegria Udes' beautiful memoir. Udes is the writer of the Tony Award-winning musical In the Heights, which has recently made which was recently made into a major film, as you know. In Mi Lenguaje Roto, or My Broken Language, she tells her lyrical story of coming of age against the backdrop of an ailing Philadelphia barrio with her sprawling Puerto Rican family as a collective um, muse. The book was long listed for the Carnegie Medal and named one of the best books of the year by several media outlets. It is really most certainly a must read. Isabel Allende's new novel, Violeta, published earlier this year, is as sweeping as you would expect and want an Isabel Allende book to be. It spans several eras, it features a strong, resilient woman at its center, and has all the elements of a beautifully crafted historic, historical novel. In it, we meet Violeta, whose life is marked by extraordinary yet devastating events, from the Great War to the Spanish flu. Her family loses all and is forced to retreat to a wild and beautiful but remote part of the country. There she will come of age and her first suitor will come calling. Epic, inspiring, and really deeply emotional, this novel puts in context what it means to live to the fullest, even when it seems that the world has been upended. Nobel Prize winner Jose Saramago needs little introduction, but this is the first time that this author's first novel will be available in Spanish from the original Portuguese. With extraordinary narrative force and an unforgettable female character, La Viuda tells the story of Maria Leonor, mother of two children and recently widowed, who feels extremely overwhelmed by the difficulties of managing her farm in the Alentejo region in Portugal. After a few months in deep depression, she finally decides to face her responsibility as the owner of the land, but her heart is tormented by a secret sin. Despite being in mourning, her desire has not subsided. The publication of this book marks the beginning of our celebration of Saramago's 100 years. For this occasion, we will be relaunching many of his biggest books with new covers similar to this one. 
We are also very excited and extremely proud to publish uh, Paradise by last year's Nobel Prize for Literature winner, Abdul Razak Gurna. Gurna is a writer of Tanzanian origin, author of numerous short stories, essays, and a dozen novels. Paradise, a coming of age story that illuminates the harshness and beauty of an Africa on the brink of colonization, was published originally in 1994 and was nominated for the Booker and Whitbread Awards. This is the first book by the author in Spanish that will be available in the US and we will have two more by this author coming this year. Another one of the greats coming this year, Mario Vargas Llosa and his new essay, La Mirada Quieta de Pérez Galdú. In it, Vargas Llosa, one of the most representative voices of Latin American literature, profiles Benito Pérez Galdós, one of the most transcendental, prolific, and versatile writers of Spanish literature. Pérez Galdós's profile is reminiscent of Vargas Llosa himself for his dedication to narrative, politics, journalism, and for his comprehensive conception of the novel. Mrs. March is Virginia Feito's uh, first novel, originally written in English, but already receiving rave reviews from critics in Spain, so much so that she has been called the Spanish Patricia Highsmith. La Señora March offers a razor sharp exploration of the fragility of identity. A mesmerizing novel of psychological suspense, it will have you second guessing your own seemingly familiar reflection in the mirror. There is currently a film in the works starring Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss, the star of the series The Handmaid's Tale. The New York Times has called it an accomplished debut and The Guardian, a brilliant psychological study that's a must read. Also in May comes Feria by Ana Iris Simon. The author is 30 years old and was born in Castilla-La Mancha, the region in central Spain made famous as the setting of the adventures of Don Quixote. Her parents' families were from two villages there and her maternal grandparents were feriantes or traveling fairground workers, giving the book its title. Feria has become a literary phenomenon with 13 editions and more than 40,000 copies sold in Spain since November 2020. It is an autobiographical book that reflects on the life in rural Spain. And if you're a fan of Elena Ferrante's work, Feria is right up your alley. Next up, Tania Garcia is the creator of The Real Education Method and a family advisor through her online school. She's the author of several parenting bestsellers. This particular book, which translates to Love Yourself, offers a clear and pragmatic approach to navigating one of the most important concerns in parenting, nurturing a child's self-esteem. It is a simple yet highly approachable book that would be a welcome addition to any family bookshelf. Also on the topic of parenting, Laia Aguilar, a midwife and international board certified lactation consultant, created a postpartum and childbirth app that receives more than 90,000 weekly queries. Um, in her book, she addresses maternal health as a key component of the baby's well-being, as well as other related topics such as the role of the couple, the extended family, and the arrival of a second child. There are almost no books in Spanish about postpartum in the market, so this really is a vital resource for any young couple. Next is another author who really needs no uh, introduction. Young Pueblo was born in Ecuador and grew up in Boston. He began practicing Vipassana meditation shortly after graduating from college and getting clean from drugs and alcohol. Soon after he started his writing career and his poems went completely viral. He is one of the uh, new and most powerful voices in personal growth today. Claridad y Conexión is the Spanish edition of Clarity and Connection, a new collection of poetry and short prose focused on understanding how the past impact our present relationships. Also an exciting highlight for May is the Spanish edition of the 100th anniversary edition of The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. The greatest poem of the 20th century turns 100 years old and we will celebrate it with this beautiful special edition. As you know, this is the author's best best-selling book in English and an essential work to understand our time. More than 100,000 copies of Catherine May's book, Wintering, have been sold since it published back in 2020, which is no surprise, as the queens of inspirational narratives Cheryl Strayed and Elizabeth Gilbert have raved about it. We, have, we are so happy to be publishing it in Spanish with the same cover as the English, at a time when rest and introspection really is of utmost importance. Catherine May invites us to do just this by telling us her own personal struggles with illness, family, and work, and how she managed to find self-improvement and inspiration through it all. And speaking of powerful women, in May we will also publish Malas Mujeres, a beautifully illustrated story of full of humor and intelligence about women who have embodied evil, such as Eve, Pandora, Elena de Troya, 
uh, Maleficent, Madame Bovary, or Juana la Loca, spanning generations. Maria Hess is both the author and the illustrator of this book. Her most successful book, an illustrated biography of Frida Kahlo, has been translated into 18 languages. And last but not least, the story of another extraordinary woman, Eufrosina Cruz, who gained notoriety when she won the election for municipal president of Santa Maria Quiegolani, a town in Mexico in 2007, and her victory was annulled because traditional laws stipulated that women could not be elected. In 2010, she was elected as a local deputy, then later became the first indigenous woman president of the Congress of Oaxaca. And finally, as a federal deputy, she succeeded in amending the Mexican constitution. She's an inspiration to young girls and women everywhere. If you Google her, you'll found around more or less 200,000 articles written about her, many of them front page stories of news outlets here in the US. So I think that's a nice positive um, note to end on. Thank you so much for listening. And I do hope you get a chance to read some of these really wonderful books. If you're looking for something specific or a tailored list, please reach out to our wonderful sales rep, Veronica Cervera, who can definitely help you. Um, I'm gonna drop her email in the chat as well as my email in case you need anything or have any questions. And that's it from me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alexandra. We don't see any um, questions, but wonderful books. We're looking forward to them. Thank you. Okay. And now our third presenter is Mariela Diaz from Spanish Publishers. Spanish Publishers is a corporate member of Reforma. And for more information about this company and contact information, please visit reformala.org forward slash blog forward slash book fair. And remember to use your hashtag Reforma LA Book Fair. Feel free uh, again to add your questions in the chat box during the presentation and they will be answered at the end. Welcome, Mariela. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, mm -hmm. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining me today and giving me the opportunity to share my presentation with you. For those who don't know me, my name is Mariela Diaz and I am the sales manager of Spanish Publishers. Last year, we went from 14 publishers to 19 publishers, of which 17 are from Spain and two are from Mexico. Uh, we present 100 to 120 new releases per month, all genres. And um, okay, let's begin with the presentation. The next one, please. Okay, un verdor terrible. Uh, when we case to understand the world, this one is from Editorial Anagrama, a fiction general, uh, short lists for 2021 International Booker Prize, one of the New York Times book reviews, 10 best books of 2029. Um, the narratives include, uh, included in this book are about science, its searches, attempts, experiments, and hypotheses. Um, the changes it introduces in the world. Benjamin Labatut has written a book which speaks of discoveries that are the result of chance and exploration of the limits of the unknown. Next. Este Dia Importa, This Day Matters from Carlos Cuauhtémoc Sánchez, Mexican very well-known author, a personal growth book winning author of the National Prize of Youth in Literature and National Prize for Creative Minds. His books have uh, reached the list of bestsellers translations into several languages. This Day Matters contains the powerful and applicable concepts of methodology that will teach us to make every day a great day, fighting with strategy to recover from the most devastating adverse adversities. Next. Realidad Espiritual y Hombre Moderno, uh, from David uh, Hawkins. Grano de Mostaza is the, the publisher. It's a mind, body, and spirit book. This book puts a modern twist and takes into consideration today's distractions or tools in attaining spiritual enlightenment. This is the seventh book in the series based on revelations of consciousness research. It describes in detail how to discern not only truth from a falsehood, but also illusions of appearance from the actual core of reality. It provides the tools to survive and regain fun fundamental autonomy and inner harmony while living with the complexities of modern world. Next. Volver a ser feliz, 
Um, it's from uh, Editorial Sirio. It's a personal growth book, instant New York Times bestseller, empowering advice for overcoming setbacks uh, from authors of the popular blog, Mark and Angel Hack Life. Mark and Angel uh, Chernoff have become go-to voices into the area of personal development, reaching tens of thousands of funds each day with their fresh and relatable insights. Getting back to happy reveals their strategies uh, for changing uh, thought uh, patterns and daily habits to bounce back from thought times. Sharing never before published stories and advice, the book shows us how to harness the power of daily rituals, mindfulness, self-care, and more overcome whatever life throws our way in order to become the best selves. Next. La Dieta Steer Food y Sus Recetas. Uh, this one is from Ediciones Obelisco, Nutrition and Dieting. Uh, revelation to my diet, introducing Steer Foods has allowed me to attain body uh, composition and well-being previously unimaginable. Um, uh, Jumpstart your way to better health with over 100 tried and test recipes from best-selling authors, the Steer Food Diet. The easy to use recipe book combines the latest nutritional advice with a, an essential meal plan to help you lose weight and feel great. The nutritional medicine experts, Adam Guggins and Glenn Matten made it shows how these uh, certain act activating recipes will switch on our body's fast burning powers to supercharge weight loss improve energy levels and promote amazing health. Next. Untamed, uh, this one is from uh, Glenn Doyle. It's uh, a personal growth, a New York Times bestseller, over 2 million copies sold. Amazon bestseller rank is number 78 in books, number one in Christian self-help, number two in woman, women's biography, number 10 in happiness self-help. Untamed is a story of how one woman learned that a responsible mother is not only, is not one who shows her children how to fully live. It's the story of navigating divorce, forming a new family, and discovering that the wholeness of family depends on each member's ability to bring their full self to table. Next, please. El Poder de la Conciencia from Ediciones Obelisco. This one is Religion and Spirituality. Amazon bestseller rank number nine in metaphysics, number 66 in New Thought Spirituality, number 43 in Philosophy Metaphysics, number 78 in Spiritual Meditation. In this book, Neville gives us the key to open our eyes to the true nature of being. He shows us the cons consciousness in this one and only reality and the circumstances or conditions are only the product of our own consciousness. Neville teaches us how to use our mind to carry out our wishes. Next, please. Confía todo es posible, from Susan Powell. Um, this author, um, Susan Powell, uh, 10th book, more than 200,000 uh, of her books have been sold in this one like of, uh, all her books. It's an excellent, simple, and touches your soul. Uh, we have a bad news. Uh, the author passed away last year in November 2021, but her books are awesome. Susan Powell shares in this book the endless number of adventures and anecdotes um, live at different times and places along her path a collection of stories, many of them hilarious, incredible, you will want to read over and over again. These experiences closely narrated and uh, full of humor and ingenuity become inspirational pills that will help us to connect and, life, and live a life full of love. Next one, please. Um, Malibu Racing, uh, it's a fiction book, Amazon bestseller rank number 99 in books, number eight in family saga fiction, number nine in sisters fiction, number 20 in women's friendship fiction, 
uh, Malibu, uh, August 1983. It's uh, the day. It, it's the day of Nina Rivers' annual and annual end of summer party, and anticipation is uh, at a fever pitch. Everyone wants to be around the famous Rivas, Nina, the talented, suffer and supermodel, brothers Jay and Hugh, one of the champion, championship suffer, uh, the other a renewed photographer, and their adored baby sister Kit. Together, the siblings are a source of fascinating fascination in Malibu and the world over, especially as of as the offspring of the legendary singer Mick Riva. The only person not looking forward to the party of the year is Nina herself. Next one, please. El secreto de los buen días sobre 100 años de soberedad. Uh, it's a nonfiction book. The buen día secret is an invitation to discover uh, the definitive uh, keys to the Melquiades parchments on 100 years of solicitude, solicitude, solitude, a classic of Latin America fiction, a work of 19th century. Let's go to the next one, please. Y no, vivir en el asombro. It's a self-help, national bestseller. If the greatest advantage uh, in this uh, life is a positive brain, it's a vital. It's vital we find a way to bring joy back into our work and relationship. Regarding Ino, we'll return hope and wander back into your pursuit of happiness. Let's go to the next one, please. Robar el Fuego, Stealing Fire. It's a psychology book, Amazon bestseller rank number six in pharmacology, number 23 in cognitive neuroscience, cognitive neuropsychology, uh, and neuropsychology, number 23 in neuropsychology. It's the biggest revolution you've ever heard of, and it's hiding in plain sight over the past decade. Silicon Valley, Valley execute executives like Eric Schmidt and Elon Musk, special operators like the Navy SEALs and the Green Beards, and Mavericks scientists like Sasha Shulgin and Amy Cutie have turned everything we thought we knew about high performance upside down. Stealing Fire is a provocative examination of what's actually possible, a guidebook for anyone who wants to radically upgrade their life. Next one, please. Ariadne, this one is a fiction book. It's a very well-known uh, author, Jennifer Saint. Um, Ariadne, Princess of Crete, grows up uh, greeting the dawn from her beautiful dancing floor and listening her uh, nursemaid uh, stories of gods and heroes. But beneath her golden palace echo, the ever-present uh, hood beats of her brother, the Minotaur, a monster who demands blood sacrifice. When Titius, Prince of Athens, arrives to vanquish the beast, Ariadne sees in his green eyes a way to escape, defining the gods betraying her family and country and risking everything for love. Ariadne helps tissue skill Minotaur. Next one, please. Tiny Habits, Habitos Minimos. This one is a personal growth book. New York Times bestseller, Amazon bestseller rank number 38 in business and management, number 18 in personal time management, number 76 in happiness self-help. A habit expert from Stanford University shares his break, uh, breakthrough method for building habits quickly and easily. With tiny habits, you will increase productivity by tapping into positive emotions to create a happier and healthier life. Dr. Fox knew an extremely practical method picks up uh, where atomic habits left off. BJ Fogg is here to change you, your life and revol revolutionize how we think about human behavior. Next one. El Libro de los Amigos Perdidos, The Book of Lost Friends. It's a historic fiction book. New York Times bestseller, Amazon bestseller, ranked number 26 in Southern fiction. 
Wingate makes history come alive. Historical fiction fans will appreciate the authentic articles and the connection between modern times and the past, while adventure loves will enjoy, lovers will enjoy a voyage reminiscent of Huckleberry uh, Finn. Next one, please. El Código del Cancer, the Cancer Code, our revolutionary new understanding of a medical mystery from uh, Jason Fung, a very well-known author. This one is a health and fitness book. Amazon bestseller rank number 16 in nutrition for cancer preven prevention, number eight in oncology, number 29 in general diabetes health. Dr. Jason Fung returns with an A-opening biography of cancer in which he offers a radical new paradigm and understanding uh, cancer and issues a call to action to reducing risk moving forward. For hundreds of years, cancer has been portrayed as a foreign in invader, invader we've been uh, powerless to stop by reshaping our view of cancer as an internal uprising of our own healthy cells, we can begin to take back control. The seed of cancer may exist in all of us, but the power to change the soil is in our hands. Next one, please. La Bolsa Medicinal, the medicine bag from Jose Ruiz, one of the children of uh, Don Luis Miguel Ruiz. This one is a mind and uh, body and spirit uh, book. The medicine bag, shamanic rituals, ceremonies from personal transformation. The Amazon rank for this book is number eight in Native America religion, number five in shamanism, number 15 in personal transformation and spirituality. Toltec Shaman, a New York Times bestselling author, Don Jose Ruiz introduces the wealth of shamanity, shamanic rituals and ceremonies and provides a detailed guide to performing them on your own. This book is a toolkit of a spiritual practices meant to open to you a world of beauty, exploration, and transformation. Next. El Bar de las Grandes Esperanzas, The Tender Bar. It's a biography and memoir, Amazon bestseller rank, number one in Mid-Atlantic US biographies, number one in Western US biographies, number one in New England US biographies. Uh, J.R. Um, Moringer grew up in uh, up captivity by a voice. It was the voice of his father, a New York City disc jockey who vanished before J.R. spoke his first word. Sitting on the stop, pressing an ear to the radio, J.R. would uh, strain to hear that uh, plumy baritone, uh, the secrets of masculinity and identity. Uh, thought G.R.'s mother was his world, his rock. He craved something more, something faintly and unhauntingly audible only in the voice. At uh, eight years old, Suddenly unable to find the voice on the radio, JR turned in desperation to the bar on the corner where he found a rose in chorus of new voices. Next one, please. La Vida Secreta de los Sueños, The Hidden uh, Lives of Dreams. Uh, it's a mind, body, and spirit book, a masterpiece of dreams and how to interpret them as a contribution to our existence. The next one, please. El don de la sensibilidad en la crianza, the highly sensitive parent. It's a parenting and family book, bestseller rank number 56 in emotions and mental health, number 62 in psychology of personalities. From the world renowned authority and international bestselling author, the highly sensitive person comes an indispensable guide for a significant number of parents who are unusually attuned to their children. The Highly uh, Sensitive Parent is the only book on its, on its kind, written specifically for parents who think deeply about every issue affecting their kids, experiencing strong emotions as a result, and face unique stressors that do not impact parents without high sensitivity. sensitivity. Next one, please. Um, um, this is the biography of... Uh, of uh, Michael Jordan. 
It's a sports New York Times bestselling from Pulitzer Prize winning journalist comes the best Jordan book so far. It's a review from Washington Post. Let's go to the next one, please. Como superar el duelo, how to get over grief, a definitive, uh, definitive book to get through the painful challenge of saying goodbye with a little pain as possible. There's an, there is only one recipe for the last goodbye. Forgive me, I forgive you, thank you, I love you, bye. The next one, please. Open Memoirs, uh, it's another sports uh, book. Um, mesmerizing and hypnotic, the best biography I have read in the last decade. Ale, it's a review from Alessandro Barico, one of our uh, authors, very well-known authors. Uh, it's, the, it's the life of Andrea Gassi, one of the uh, tennis players. Um, at the age of 16, his new look promises to change tennis forever and thus his light fast return. And yet despite his raw talent, he struggles early on. Agassi shocks the world and himself by capturing the 1922 Wimbledon. Um, with its uh, break uh, neck tempo and raw candor open will be read and, and cherish it for years. A treat for an ardent fans, it will also captive readers who know nothing about tennis. Like Agassi's game, it sets a new standard for grace, style, speed, and power. The next one, please. Cocina con Harry Potter, the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. Amazon rank is number one in children's cookbooks, number two in children's hobby, hobby and craft books. Uh, contains uh, classic British uh, recipes um, that any muggle would love. It has 150 delicious recipes from wizards, uh, from wizards and non-wizards. The saga that has sold 12 million copies reaches the kitchen. Next one, please. Astrologia Horaria, Hor Horary Astrology. It's an astrology book, a very helpful combination of information for the ca casual and also for the experienced astrologers. Next one, please. We have like a minute left, Mariela. Unmasked is a present chronicles. Amazon bestseller rank 14 in radical political thought, uh, number five in local USA politics, number 79 in censorship and politics. Let's have the next one, please. Narraciones Extraordinarias from Selector, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, Poe is considered the original, uh, the originator of the tech, the tech, detective short fiction. His intense and beautifully writing stories focus on macabre, murder, sickness, darkness, and, young, and danger ab abound. Many of his uh, stories are extremely frightening. Next, if we have more time. Detox from Susan Powell. Again, it's a health and fitness book. Uh, to the physical detox process must add the mental and emotional only. Uh, then will uh, we achieve the changes that can give us the, our best version. The cleaning must be complete to integrate all the lessons that um, the universe wants us to learn. Um, I think I don't have more time. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. And if you need more information, please uh, let me know. My, I will, I will uh, put my information in the chat or the Anna's will give you my information too. Anna, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Maria. Anna already put the information in the chat. Oh, great. Thank and you also, so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can the see The PowerPoint it. Uh, presentations are also available on our website. So people can go there as well as the Excel sheet. So they can see the list of the items that you mentioned during the presentation. Um, so thank yeah. You, Maria. Thank then, you so um, much. There's no questions. So we're going to go ahead and thank you, Maria. We'll bring our Next presenter, uh, Marjorie Sampler from Lectorum Publications. Lectorum is a corporate member of Reforma. For more information about this company and contact information, please visit reforma.reformala.org forward slash blog forward slash book fair. And remember to use our hashtag ReformaLA book fair. 
feel free to add your questions to the comment box during the presentation and they will be answered at the end. And welcome Marjorie or Marty. <laughs> Hello everybody. Uh, and thank you, Anna, for helping us with our presentation. We've had an issue with our firewall and Zoom, so uh, they agreed to help us out. So the first book that I wanted to talk about is El Poder del Perro, which is the Spanish edition of The Power of the Dog. It is... Uh, Margie, can you give us a minute? Let's, uh, we're oh, going to sure, put up no the problem. presentation. Yeah, apologies. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, it's the lectorum, right? Correct? Yes. Yes. Got it. Just want to make sure. Thank, Thank you, Patty. Okay, there we go. Okay, the first book is El Poder del Perro. It is the translation of Thomas Savage's The Power of the Dog, which uh, I know it says coming to Netflix. It's actually already out. It uh, released December 1st. And it's very interesting. It's a Western genre, but not sort of like your, you know, there's a lot of drama behind it. It was actually a book released in 1967 originally, and it got great critical acclaim but it wasn't very popular. And then Jane Champion picked it up, put it on Netflix, and it sort of had a resurgence. It's about these two brothers. They do everything together. They have a ranch. One, of course, is stronger than the other, which happens in a lot of family relationships. And that everything changes when the power shifts, when the one who's a lot quieter and more gentle gets married and brings his wife to the ranch and that turns everything sort of topsy-turvy. And it's been very popular on Netflix and we recommend the book plus the series as well. The next book is La Ley de la Inocencia. It's Michael Connolly, who's always uh, tops the New York Times bestseller list. And it's very interesting The his uh, detective Mickey Haler is pulled over by the police and they find the body of one of his clients in the trunk. So obviously he was set up, but of course, since he's made a lot of enemies, um, the judge sets like a $5 million bail. So he can't get out of jail. So he decides to defend himself and he's in the jail. He has to sort of look over his shoulder, prepare his defense, you know, not knowing uh, even who to trust. And then he calls upon another Michael Connolly character that appears in a lot of his books, Harry Bosch, and they, he has to figure out how to uh, defend himself, prove his innocence, and get out of jail. Also, a, another novel, uh, El Amor Cae del Cielo, is a very lighthearted uh, romantic uh, fiction uh, by Esther Sanz. She's a Spanish writer. And it is about a character named Violeta, who's an illustrator who has to finish a very, very important project. So she decides to uh, go to a remote house in a small Spanish town. And it would be a great place to find inspiration because she has, I'm, I don't know what illustrators have. I know it's not writer's block, but I guess it's artistic block. And she figures there, she'll figure out how to finish her project, reunite with some friends, and maybe even find love. The next novel um, we're very excited about, La Mansión de los Chocolates, Los Años Inciertos. This is actually the third book uh, in the series. You can see the others uh, that are there. Um, it is historical fiction. This, this part of the trilogy takes place in 1936. And the main character, Victoria, uh, comes from a family, her family is, uh, they make uh, chocolates and she goes to France to study, but she has to come back to Stuttgart where her family is from uh, because her father dies suddenly and she has to help with the family business. But since it's 1936 there, the Nazis are also there. They wanna take the mother's business um, 
and there is a American uh, named Andrew Miller, a businessman who gets to Stuttgart at the same time. And not only does he sort of uh, upend Victoria's sort of like love life, uh, he comes up with a possible solution to the family's problems. And of course he's hiding a secret and I don't wanna give it sort of to give away too much, but you know, you have your backdrop of the Olympics. The novel takes place in Stuttgart, Berlin and New York. And it really is a perfect ending to the other three books. I mean, you could read it on its own, but it's good to read them in order. The next book is uh, La Fiebre del Ajedrez. And I am sure that uh, all librarians have sort of seen a resurgence in, in chess since The Queen's Gambit. And we get a lot of requests, not just for children, uh, how to play chess, but this is one for adults. And it teaches you uh, like 64 strategies. Um, and they're really, it's sort of, it's easy to follow. I'm not a chess player, my husband is. And I was sort of looking at it and it sort of talks not just about how to attack, but how to evade. Um, and so it's definitely uh, going to be popular uh, given that Netflix show, right? Yeah, also mm -hmm. Netflix, that's what I thought. The next book uh, on this slide is Tu Puedes Ser Un Genio de la Bolsa. And this is very interesting because it's telling people, it's not just, okay, invest in the stock market, but they're saying maybe look at industries and companies that Wall Street isn't talking about. And that's a way that uh, you can uh, sort of map out a path, a path to success that would be different, probably a little more stable. It's not just gonna be what Wall Street wants to, to push. And it's, it's actually very, it's very easy to read. I think a lot of people might think it's just gonna be like a straight business book, but he really created this book for um, beginners. And it's already in its third edition. So it definitely, with the market going crazy, it's something to look at. This next book I found very interesting. It's called Acompañar el Cancer. And there are a lot of books on cancer, but there aren't that many books for the caretaker of somebody with cancer. And this book gives advice, not only on how to handle hearing the diagnosis, not just for yourself as the caregiver, but for the patient. Also, you know, there's information on how to take care of the patient, but it's also information on how to take care of yourself. Because if anybody's ever taking care of somebody who's sick, you know it is, it can be very challenging, very taxing, and sometimes sort of thankless. So this sort of helps you deal with you, you know your emotions and pain separately from taking care of your loved one. Okay, the next book is La Evolución Humana, which was written by a Spanish paleontologist. And it's not just a book about evolution and sort of how we got, you know, from the Stone Age to where we are today, but it has a very interesting section that I have not seen in any other book on this subject. And it talks about the cost, not just, you know, monetary, but it's also the the, you know, when there's the, uh, like the trafficking of fossils and um, artifacts that people, you know, dig up, what that does, you know, uh, for history, what it does for the patrimony of, you know, wherever they were found. So I've never really seen a section that dealt with, you know, the market and traffic. I didn't even really know there was a market at that point either for fossils, but uh, apparently there is uh, something um, and it just sort of makes, will make people think maybe twice, because, you know, this is the age where so many, so many artifacts are being sent back to their original countries. Um, maybe people will think twice if they're interested in buying fossils to leave them for study. The next book, um, Aprende a Descansar is a very interesting book because I'm sure we've all been there where, you know, you say, okay, I got a great night's sleep. You wake up, you're still tired. The first thing you do is reach for the coffee pot, you know, um, and they basically it's, you know, they talk about junk sleep and this is sort of how to relax 
your mind, your body, really learn how to sleep so you truly can regenerate because, uh, you know, this will help with your concentration. Um, it'll help with your motivation because really if you don't sleep, you're not going to be productive. The next book, Relájate y Educa, offers, uh, you know, parenting um, solutions for everyday conflicts. It helps parents figure out um, what will reduce tension in their house. Um, the author, Amaya de Miguel, has an online parenting school and has a huge following on social media. And in this book, you know, she presents the questions she's most commonly asked, including um, fighting, uh, screen time, uh, chores, and will, she, her advice is solid. It will actually, you know, it'll, it's good for both the parents and the children. They'll have harmony in the house, you know, and um, everyone will be able to enjoy themselves. And then I left the best book for last that I wanted to talk about a little bit more. If the name sounds familiar, the last name Del Risco, Enrique Del Risco happens to be the husband of our very own Ada Del Risco, who some of you guys might know. He happens to be an award-winning novelist and he writes short stories. And this is part of a memoir. I think this is the third volume in memoir that he's uh, written. And it is about that being uh, in Cuba in the 1990s, which is which they call um, like the special time when right after the Soviet Union broke up, all the aid that would flood into uh, Cuba from the Soviet Union dried up. So things became very scarce. And what's interesting about this title, Nuestra Hambre en La Habana, it's sort of a little sort of play on, if you guys know, remember the book Nuestro Hombre in La Habana, because he, all, he has, you know, a very great sense of humor. And it uh, talks about growing up in a time where the youth were figuring out, will they have a voice? Because there was a lot of repression. Um, and uh, as I say, there was, you couldn't find certain things that you used to be able to get at the market you couldn't get. So it's really, you know, if you think about maybe coming into your own, especially now there's so much unrest, you know, if you're doing that amid sort of strife, how do you do that? You know, keep your, your sense of humanity, your sense of humor, and also while dealing with the repression that they also face. So uh, we definitely, um, recommend this book and all his other books. You guys might know him from his novel recently, Turcos en la Niebla. I know he's writing another book. I don't wanna to give too much away about that because as I say, we have a little bit of an inside track to Enrique's uh, writing career. So if you guys have any questions about this book, we could even ask him and I'm sure he'd be more than happy to answer that for you. And I know I didn't use up all my time, but, uh, those were the books that I wanted to show. Thank you, Margie. We're looking forward um, to your books too. And I don't see any questions, but we did add your information to the chat box so people can contact you if they have any questions. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. And thank you for doing our presentation for us. We will figure this out at some point, <laughs> what's going on with the firewall. Yes, thank you. Okay, and now um, our next presenter is Yanni Lizarraga from Cinco Books. Cinco Books is a corporate member of Reforma. For more information about this company and contact information, please visit reformala.org forward slash blog forward slash, forward slash book fair. And remember to use our hashtag ReformaLA book fair. Again, feel free to add your questions to the comment box during the presentation and they will be answered at the end. Welcome, Yenny. Hello, everyone. Thank you for doing the book buzz again. And thank you for uh, 
allowing me to participate, to join everyone here. Thank you for all of you connected today and a special uh, congratulations and uh, greeting to all the women here because today is March the 8th. So it's not a day certainly to receive chocolates and flowers, but a day to remember all the women that came before us, all the changes and the good things that have been in place in order for us to be here today doing a presentation, having our own voice and talking about books written by women. I'm going to share my screen to start my presentation. Okay. And uh, I was thinking, what kind of books would I be uh, showing today? Because, you know, um, 20 minutes is not enough for any one of us here uh, showcasing. So I decided to do a selection on books written by women from Latin America and the world. So most of the books that you are going to see right now uh, are by women. And we're gonna start with this one for young adults, Los Sueños Tambien Flotan by Agustina Caride from Argentina. I like this story because it's uh, different. It's about um, a student that she won a scholarship to go to college. And uh, when she arrives to the new city and to the university where she's going to, there is a war, a civil war in uh, her town and she's afraid and now she has to look to ways to survive. So it's a book about empowering girls, resilience and conflict, something that we sadly we are living on today. And this is a fresh and new story that is available already um, through us. And my next book is Cat Wings by Ursula Le Guin. Many of you probably are familiar with Ursula. This is a translation from the English and is the adventures of these uh, uh, mischievous cats. Cat Wings um, was translated into Spanish for the very first time in 2019 and it was on the anniversary of the birthday for Ursula Le Guin. Uh, this is uh, by Flamboyant in Spain, but it's a beautiful illustrated um, edition. It's a chapter book also recommended for teenagers. My next book, Viviendo al Filo by the Mexican author Vivian Mansur by Ediciones El Naranjo. This is a book about secrets, family, high school life, and bullying, acoso escolar, something that we uh, live through. And unfortunately, something that is uh, really hard to identify even at the family level sometimes. So it's good to have these stories because they serve as mirrors and windows to children, to teens, and even to their parents to understand, to identify as well the situations, the symptoms when there is a bullying situation for a children or even when you have a bully at home. Um, so highly recommended for those topics, Viviendo al Filo. This is a graphic novel by the Colombian author and illustrator, Power Paola, Virus Tropical. It's, um, it's a story about motherhood. It's about discrimination, about the stereotypes in Latin America and violence for, uh, for women expecting, but not violence like in the terms or in the sense like uh, someone um, beating her or anything in this case of the protagonist of the story. It's violence, for example, um, in the streets, like uh, harassing, like uh, men yelling at her, saying, you know, vulgar things to women. Those like day by day situations that these women in Virus Tropical are experiencing. And that's why I think it's a, it's a way to have the title Virus Tropical. It makes sense because it's like a virus that has been transmitted sometimes from generation to generation. And 
the way that Power Paola picture it is like with some humor and sarcasm, but it's very real, like very raw. And the story goes around when her mother was pregnant. It's uh, published by Sexto Piso. I think most of you are probably familiar with, with Sexto Piso from Mexico. Now, this is one of my favorites lately, La Historia Indígena de Estados Unidos. And this is a study that was done by the uh, professor and activist Roxanne Dumbar Ortiz. This is a translation from the English. And it's a story about Native Americans, like more than um, 3 million people, descendants of Native Americans and about at least 500 indigenous nations currently recognized by the federal government here in the United States. Their story here is being told. My next recommendation for today, Máquinas Voladoras, is poetry by Roxana Mendez from El Salvador. And she was awarded in 2020 and 2019. And now there is a new book coming uh, by her as well. This is a prolific writer and poet. She lives in El Salvador, but has participated in his writing uh, in Spain and other countries. This book is about poetry. It was, uh, it was awarded by Fundación Cuatro Gatos. And it's for young adults. Now we have Casas Vacías by the Mexican writer Brenda Navarro. This is a story about motherhood, but it's different because it's a thriller. It's more terror and suspense. This is a mother who loses her child. And Brenda Navarro was able to explain the suffering and the situations that this mother is going through because she misses her child and the women that kidnap the kid. So in like parallel life, she was able to explain the suffering from both women, one that wanted so bad to have a child and the other one that had it, but lost it. Um, Brenda Navarro has been awarded for being a fresh and new writer. Her book, Casas Vacías, was first published uh, electronically and then it was taken by Sexto Piso and it has been a, a success. Um, the translation uh, from Spanish to English is available this year. I don't remember now the publisher who is going to have it, but I believe it's going to be available in the summer. Empty Houses will be the title in English, if you want to look at it as well. In Ficciones, Relatos de Escritoras en Confinamiento. Ten writers that live here in the States, part of our community, the publisher, Aguamiel Ediciones, is from Miami. Um, the editor is someone that I know personally, uh, La Venezolana, Alicia Monsalve, was in charge of this project, and she was able to compile short stories and personal experiences from these 10 writers from our community. And they were able to tell how it was for them, the pandemic and the quarantine time. So it's a very current topic, you know, even though we are hopefully at the end of the pandemic, um, it's good to read other experiences also to earn perspective and to know how we are and where we are in um, our community and how we can either change things around, improve, and help. My next recommendation, Suicidio con Azúcar. This is a book about nutrition. It's a translation from the English that Dr. Nancy Appleton is the writer. And it's pretty much a um, call of attention to our decisions and to notice that many things that we eat daily contain sugar and they shouldn't have you noticed that ham usually has sugar in it it's not supposed to have it but it's uh sugar is a naturally 
flavor improver. So that's why the food industry is adding sugar to many things that in reality don't need sugar. So it's good, it's for information and also is um, um, a good reflection for us to keep an eye on what are we eating. We want to lose weight, but we keep eating things that have sugar and we don't even know it, things like that. Uh, those are my recommendations of books written by women. And I'm just, I just want to do like a commercial here about the services that Cinco Books is offering because this is a, a very um, short list. Uh, we assist public libraries and school districts with collection development and curriculum. And starting this year, we are offering cataloging and processing. So to provide shelf ready collections. Our showroom is available virtual and in person. Usually the sessions are one or two hours long. And it has to be um, booked with anticipation at least one or two weeks before. And we have three types of showroom. Children's, adults, comic and manga. And after we have the showroom, usually we... Um, give you a spreadsheet where you can do your selection and place your order. That's basically the process. For more information, you have my email over there. Now I have a couple more recommendations. Las Auténticas Profecias Toltecas. Usually we rely on, uh, you know, the Chinese um, Zodiac or Horoscopo Chino. But these ones are based on uh, indigenous Tolteca and Aztec traditions. You know that the Aztecs and the Mayans were very well known to, for their astrology and many um, knowledge that they have about the astros and the universe. So this is a good book to explore their traditions and what they believe about, you know, the influence that the moon and the sun and the planets have on us. Then I want to talk about this uh, graphic novel by Elisa Amado from Guatemala. Manuelito is uh, the story about a 13 year old from Guatemala that he's fleeing um, organized crime in his native uh, Guatemala. He's coming to the United States. He's one of the thousands of children that came to the United States since 2014 until today. And you know, there are many of them that are still separated from their families. So this is a graphic novel to create conscience about this situation, this social crisis, this humanitarian crisis on refugees and human rights. I have some uh, uh, manga that I want to show you. El Marido de Mi Hermano. This is a manga translated from the Japanese. There are only four volumes available in Spanish. It's a fairly new manga. And it's the story about this family. Um, there were two siblings that were separated because one of them was uh, gay. And then he just was kind of shunned by his family. Then he moved to Canada, he got married there, and suddenly he dies. And then uh, his husband travels to Japan to meet the family of her now late husband. And it's how this husband that is now a, a widow, how do you say when a, when a man is uh, lost his husband or wife? Is widow? I am not sure if that is the word, but, but you know what I mean, what I mean, right? If you know the word and if there is a different word, feel free to write it in the chat so I can learn a new word today. And the situation here is that how this family interacts and how now the family is missing the brother that is no longer alive and they earn this new brother. That's why it's called El Marido de Mi Hermano. And the little girl that you see in the picture is the nephew, is the, is the nephew of this guy. So 
it's a very uh, entertaining and loving story with a lot of layers. It talks about family, grief, forgiveness, and you know the diversity in families. Then some manga for 18 uh, and plus. I selected these two because the topics are similar, segregation, discrimination. Uh, in the case of Golden Kamui, it's a story about Japanese natives that we don't hear that much about uh, native people in Japan because it was just recently, less than 10 years ago that they recognized that they had native people. So there is like a very strong resistance and a very strong um, policies and um, traditions to discriminate against the native people in Japan. And it's exposed in this historical fiction uh, series, Golden Kamui. So this is one of the reasons that I wanted to show it to you. Beastars um, is a series about segregation and discrimination and the characters are animals. So they are different uh, animals and they discriminate uh, against each other uh, for being different, so like too short, too hairy, uh, too tall, things like that. You know, that in perspective is like, um, it's like a metaphor of what we as humans also experience. And finally, some in the LGBTQ plus manga for 18 and over, Quiero Tocar Tu Uniforme and bloom into you. Quiero tocar tu uniforme is a, a romantic story about uh, two boys in high school. And bloom into you is about two girls in high school as well. And this is all the recommendations that I have for you today. Feel free to send me any questions or, you know, orders, inquiries. Here are my email address. And thank you again to Reforma Los Angeles for organizing this wonderful meeting. Thank you, Jenny. What a great selection. I think uh, at this point, if I had a mental list, like every book that I saw today, like <laughs> it's a pile that I need to read now. So thank you so much. And now we are moving to our last presenter. It's Kia Trejo from Latin American Bookstores. For more information about this company and contact information, please visit reformala.org forward slash blog forward slash book fair. And remember to use our hashtag reformala book fair. Welcome, Kia. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Okay, I'm going to start sharing my screen. Okay, I think I'm set. Okay, um, we will start with, oops, okay, no. With this recommendation of history, the first book we have is El Mexico de Afuera, Historia del Pueblo Chicano. And the author, David R. Maciel, offers an overview of the history of the Chicano people, tracing their origins from colonial Mexico to the present. In this book, the author presents the Chicano experience from various regions. And also we have Mujeres Piratas, Las Princesas, Prostitutas y Corsarias que Gobernaban los Siete Mares. And this book, Tales of the, Wom Tales of the Woman, both real and legendary, who through the ages sail alongside and sometimes in command of their male counterparts. And this woman, came from all walks of life, but have one thing in common, a desire for freedom. It is the largest overview of women pirates in one volume and full of adventures. And both titles are from Fondo de Cultura Económica. The next one are biographies. The first one is Hijas de la Historia, Las Mujeres Se Construyeron a México by Isabel Revuelta. And this book is an invitation to discover from a new perspective, uh, women's like Malin Sin, Sor Juana, La Guara Rodriguez, Dolores del Rio, and other women who questioned the customs of their time and decided to change, change their destiny and therefore the course of our country. 
Isabel Revuelta tells the story of Mexico from the conquest to the post-revolutionary period through the eyes of 10 women. Also, we have Breve Historia de las Mujeres, Premier Nobel de la Paz. And this book tells about the life and motives of the 17 women who from 1985 to 2008 have received the Nobel Peace Prize with the aim of motivating us to get to know them, their ideals, aspirations, and achievements. Recently, Fondo de Cultura Económica has published a bunch of graphic novels for adults. So we have a selection. First, we have Hot LA. In Hot LA, the Argentine Horacio Altuna offers readers four short and brutal stories that reveal how racial conflict transcends the difference between races to reveal Lances in an environment permitted by violence in the ghettos of Los Angeles in the early 90s. And also we have the Suscopiones del Desierto. And in this graphic novel created by Hugo Pratt, um, it narrates the adventures of the Scorpions of the Desert, an English military group stationed in the north of the African continent during World War II. And the entire series is now available in, in Fondo de Cultura. There are three, three books, Tomo Uno, Dos y Tres. And last, we have Junius Malvi y las Praderas del Cielo by Ricardo Peláez. And this is a graphic adaptation of chapter six of The Pastures of Heaven by Nobel Prize winner John Steinbeck. Junius Malvi and San Francisco Conan finds much needed rest in the valley of the Las Praderas del Cielo, as well as a wife and a family. However, his stay in the idyllic valley reverts him to a childish state, oblivious to any responsibility. In such conditions, he suddenly faced with the challenge of taking care of his son's moral, physical, and intellectual information. All uh, these titles are now available in Fondo de Cultura Económica. For literature, we have first No Me Alcanzará La Vida by Celia del Palacio. And this is a passionate love story from this Mexican author of some of the most su successful historical novels of recent years. And it takes place in Mexico in the, in the year of 1849 and tells the story of Sofia and she's a rich landowner and Miguel. He is a combative liberal, and their love story will present time. And also, we have Ceremonia. And the most is, is the most recent novel by Colombian writer and journalist Felipe Restrepo Pombo. And it is a story that unfolds over three generations of a family that makes the family business its legacy and combination. It's a family. Saga that can occur in any Latin American upper class society and is linked to sex, gurus, wasteful money, corruption, business, luxury, drugs, alcohol, and above all, loneliness. And we also have La Ultima Condesa Nassim. The author tells the story of Clotilde van Havel, a German aristocrat married to a Come, uh, German commander who died at the end of the Second World War. And Cotilde flees from the Russian troops and faced with her situation of poverty and exile, decides to fight for her life to shed light on her past and to take advantage of her lucky breaks. All of these three books are written in original and Spanish. Also, we have La Pequeña Farmacia Literaria. And this book tells the story of Blue, a girl who lives in Florence, and her dream has always been good to work in the world of books. And she makes a decision, open her own bookstore. But life is not easy for an independent bookstore, so until Blue has an idea to transform books into drugs with her indication and therapeutic doses to heal people's selves. And Thus was born La Pequena Farmacia Literaria, 
which was soon an enormous success. And this is a story uh, of courage and hope that shows that reading is therapeutic. And also we have El Poder del Perro. Now an hour winning Netflix film by Jane Campion starring Benedict Cumberbatch and Kirsten Dunst. And this Thomas Savage acclaimed Western is set in the wide open spaces of the American West. The Power of the Dog is a stunning story of domestic tyranny, brutal masculinity and true indifference. The novel tells the story of two brothers and of the mother and son whose arrival on the brothers' ranch shatters an already tinnitus piece. Also, we have the new release from Carmen Mola, La Bestia. And this book was the Premier Planeta 2021. And it, the year is 1824 in a Madrid isolated by cholera epidemic. The population faces a terrible beast that murder girls of social low status. And this is an a historical thriller. And we also have Peligro Profundo from the best-selling author, Dot Hutchinson, and comes a suspenseful new series for the Me Too era about vigilant justice, close friends, and getting away with murder. And the book centers around main character, Rebecca, a young college student living in Florida, when several male students, as known as sexual predators, are found dead in alligator infested waters. Rebecca starts to suspect that these deaths might not be freak accidents, but a serial kill, killer out of revenge. We're now, we have here cooking books. The first one, Salsas Mexicana is the most complete work of Mexican salsas, now in a bilingual Spanish-English version, and with more than 80 recipes with photographs, Ricardo Muñoz Zurita, uh, the author, has extensive experience in the restaurant world and culinary research. And each recipe has an introductory text that expands the information on each salsa beyond the ingredients and the procedure. This is an amazing book. It's very big and it's, it's the format is hardcover. So it's very beautiful book. And also we have Acapulco de Mis Sabores, also by La Rousse. And Acapulco de Mis Sabores is a book of special recipes from Acapulco. It's written by chef Eduardo Palazuelos, who's, who presents recipes created with exquisite flavors and ingredients. On each page, you will find exquisite recipes accompanied by colorful photographs. Also, we have Recetas Keto para Todos los Días. And this book is for people who want to learn about the keto diet or support tools who are already on this regimen. It has 50 recipes created by Chef Ivan Millan. And these recipes include breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert best on our lifestyle and with ingredients that we have on hand. Then we have Como, El Arte de Comer Bien, Para Estar Bien. And this is by Dr. Carlos Jaramillo. And this is a clear and complete guide so that food becomes your best medicine. And in this book, you will be able to understand how to balance your diet with labels to better choose your food, fast without fear, deplete your body, exercise, recover, and see that healthy and delicious cooking is possible and it's not as complicated and expensive as we imagined. Also, we have El Poder de la Fibra. And in this book, um, offers a 28 day jumpstart program with menus and more than 65 recipes, along with essential advice on food sensitivities. This book offers the blueprint to start to push in your gut for a lifelong health long. And in Tu Cuerpo en Llamas by Beatriz Larrea. In this book, we also have a 30 day action program to reverse aging and maintain good health.
Uh, so we have these two exercise books. The first one is Pilatos para la Tercera Edad. And this book provides the guidelines to implement the Pilates method, method to as a functional recovery therapeutic system for the elderly. And we also have La Guía Definitiva del Yoga um, that includes exercises common and everything you need to get started with yoga practice without limit, leaving the comfort on your own home. Also, we have these books for skincare. The first one is El Alma de las Puntas Medicinales by Sari Santana. And in this book, um, the author will teach us the healing power of medicinal plants to nourish and protect our well being. And also, we have El Secreto Japonés del Yoga Facial. Um, the author is um, a Spanish and Japanese heritage, and she's a specialist in the last trends about yoga for the face. And she explains in the book all the exercises to work with your, with a specific, a specific routines. And we also have the book Skinker, Tus Primeros Pasos by Rosana Brasho, and she's a Venezuelan model and YouTuber whose beauty, skincare, and fashion blogs have amassed her more than half a million subscribers. And she created this guidebook with tips for skincare. Also, we have Anatomia del Placer Femenino. And this book, includes discussions of anatomy and er energetics, female ejaculation and expanded orgasm and much more. It's packed with sidebars providing great tips to women and their lovers. There's even a short chapter for guys summarizing the main points of the book. And Sexo Positivo by Kelly Neff integrates modern day teens such as technology and the use of social media with self-help. And the Dr. Kelly believes radical change is underway in our love and sex life. Fueled by developing technology and shifting cultural belief, the sex positive movement is a social, political, and philosophical wave that promotes and embraces sexuality and sexual expression with an emphasis on safety and consent. We also have these four self-help books. The first one is La Sensibilidad de Sonora Fuerza. And it's from the New York Times bestselling author, Anita Morjani. And this is a gorgeous and powerful guide to empath living in today's world world and how they can fully embrace their gifts of intuition and empathy. It's a book that provides you with groundbreaking information, tools, and exercises in understanding the challenges faced by empaths. And you can learn how to protect your energy and thrive. Also, we have Las Cicatrices Muelen. In this book, psychiatrist Anabel Gonzalez shows us a path to emotional healing. Through EMDR therapy, a fascinating way of working on memories and the defenses we raise against pains, we will learn to heal traumas and undo mental knots that prevent us from evolving. Also, we have Los Habitos Secretos de los Genios. And in this book, Professor Craig Wright, creator of Yale University's popular genius course, Explore what we can learn from billion minds like Einstein, Steve Jobs, and more. And examining the lives of uh, these individuals, Wright identifies more than a dozen characteristics and patterns of behavior common to these great minds. And these, the habits that 
of the mind that produced the great thinking. And also we have Vivir Sin Arrepentirse by Oscar Fajardo. And it's, this book is a complete guide to, that connects and organizes everything you need to know and where to, and where to live the life you want with conviction and commitment. Uh, it's, a, it's a read that you won't regret. We have these two books of astrology. The first one is Astrología del Alma by Levi Frank. And astrology is the ultimate power tool for self-development, empowerment, and healing. And in Astrología del Alma, we'll show you how to recognize the message and empower you to join all of the dots within yourself, meet your soul trust, and become the best you possible. And in Astrología, lo que las estrellas hacen tu personalidad de su futuro by Mecca Woods. In this book, um, let your astrological sign show you the way you best you best your best life. Find the specific activities according to your zodiac sign. Also, we have Las Niñas que Sueñan con Tienen Lo Que Quieren by Crystal Blanching. And from an engineering entrepreneur, a conversation changing parenting book about how to engage young women in science, technology, engineering, and math, filled with practical advice for both parents and educators. This is an essential reading for anyone who wants to raise girls and young women who realize their strength, engage in the world, and feel empowered to make a positive impact. Also, we have Educar Sin Pantallas by Marta Prada. And children are growing up in a digital environment that is absorbing the most valuable thing that we humans have, that is time and attention. So this book will give you the keys to manage screens in a healthy way according to the age of your children. Also, we have Terapias Naturales para Perros. And if you want to take the first steps in the use of natural therapies to improve your dog's life and you're looking for a guide, this is your book. Um, it has um, the use of um, medicinal plants, a flower and a computer, homeopathy, et cetera, and all the information you need for the positive, positive influence of the well-being of your dog. Also, we have these three how-to books. The first one, Mujeres Icónicas Tejidas Arantillo, is the, it's called Amigurini, of the women who change the world, are a part of the 15 doll projects that represent iconic women crocheted. And these books shows the materials, the types of crochet stitches used, and the techniques to be able to carry out the projects step-by-step. Also, we have Guía Completa del Bordado Creativo. Again, this, in this book, you will find endless inspiration to discover 150 hand embroidery stitches with clear step-by-step -step photos. So it's very cool. So you can do your crochets and stuff. And Jabones Naturales para Ser Uno Mismo. This book contains 10 recipes explain step-by-step step to make natural socks. And each one includes a wide selection of natural ingredients with which to achieve magnificent results and benefits. And last one, we have these three books that offer more than 100 and practical exercises to learn how to use the most used software in the world, like Office, Excel, Illustrator, etc. So you can check that out. And that's it. If you guys have any question, you have the email you can write us sale at sales at latinbooks.com. And thank you again, Reforma, for organizing this. Thank you, Kia. Great presentation throughout and Thank you to all the presenters from Lectorum Publications, Penguin Random House, Grupo Editorial, Spanish Publishers, 
HarperCollins, Simple Books, and Latin American Bookstores. And here's a reminder for all the attendees. Um, registered attendees will have the opportunity to win a Spanish book bundle for their collection value at over $200. The winners will be selected at random and announced during the last session and posted on social media. And this was our first event of the Reforma LA Spanish Book Fair. Visit reformala.org forward slash blog forward slash book fair to register to attend future events. Please join us this Thursday, March 10, where Lectorum Publications, Penguin Random House, Chao Luna, Spanish Publishers, Little Libros, and La Libreria will highlight the new Spanish books for children and young adults. And thank you, everyone, and we'll see you on Thursday.